Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're going to do a little bit different video. Today we're going to look at AGC Corporation, Deer & Company, and CNH Industrial. I've already looked at AGCO and Deer & Company, but this video is really just to look at certain things high level to see which one you like better. If you really understood this business and you wanted to dig deeper into a, a company that made sense to you, was a better value, Obviously, I'm not. I'm definitely no expert in the machinery industry or the agriculture machinery industry. I only know what I've heard, and I'm going to go over the pluses and minuses, the goods and bads of each of these different businesses, and maybe you know rank them one to three. Who knows? So AGCO, we do see a 6.6 .6 billion market cap and a 9.6 billion enterprise value. There's quite a bit more debt, net debt here, um, than you know I, I would like to see. For Deer and Company, we see the same thing: 106 billion market cap with 141 billion enterprise value. You're looking at about 30% greater. Here's about 45% greater net debt, and then CNH is almost triple um, the the net debt here with 13.4 billion market cap to 38 billion enterprise value. And so, just based on that, the most attractive would be Deer and Company as their net debt is lowest, although they have literally the most net debt in quantitative standpoint, they are the largest. And so from a percentage standpoint, it's not as bad. And Deer Company has been around since 1837. CNH has been around since 1842. And AGCO has been around a lot more recently in 1990. Their revenue growth is fairly impressive on AGCO, 9.7 billion to 14.4 billion. So you are looking at maybe 45, 50% growth there over the 10 years. For Deer, 35.2 billion to 60 billion. So although they're a bigger company, they grew even more over the last 10 years. This growth is maybe 80%. It's very, very high. CNH actually declined in revenue growth over the last 10 years. So they had negative revenue growth. CNH's gross margin recently as high as 32% but more consistently in that 20 to 25%. Operating margin has increased though with uh, operating margins as high as 20% in the most recent year, down uh, way up from high single digits over here. So pretty low operating gross margin, but that's a very high operating margin. And although revenue has gone down, earnings per share have gone up because their operating margin, their bottom line is getting a lot better. Deer, on the other hand, is pretty similar. So big increase in gross margin. They do have higher gross margin of 37%. And operating margin also increasing and is higher than CNH. And so here we see earnings per share grow greater than revenue again. So another positive sign. AGCO, very similar as well. So they have the lowest of the operating margin at 12% the most recent year, averaging probably upper single digits. And then their gross margin has gone from 21% to 26%. Uh, but again, earnings per share growing much greater than revenue. So all positive signs there. However, their AGCO return on vested capital is very grand. 18, 17, 20% the last three years. Deer is 9.5, 10.2, and 12.9. And CNH is mid to upper single digits. So when we look at the debt, we see... A balance sheet with 4.3 billion cash and 15.9 billion long-term debt, 11 billion short-term debt. Combine that, it's about 27 billion. So on a per cash flow basis, they actually haven't produced positive free cash for the last two years. If we're being generous, because again, this is going to be their capex. So if we're being generous, maybe a billion production in free cash flow, and that billion. In free cash flow is 26 times that 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 average to get to their long-term debt. So that's a huge concern. That's massive. Let's look at it for Deer. So Deer's free cash flow is much better. We look we see much better free cash flow here. And they're averaging, you know, let's say four billion, because it's ground up very high recently, but four billion roughly. And their debt is 72. So again, that's going to be well over 10 again. 
So that's going to be negative on my standpoint. AGCO's free cash flow is let's say 500 million and let's see if their debt is greater than 5 billion. It is not. Okay. So from a debt standpoint, I think I think I'm confident in saying AGCO is the best because their production of free cash flow in relation to their long-term debt is much more manageable. I mean, even if we're being, you know, picky, 400 million is definitely something that they can produce and their short-term and long-term debt is 1.4 billion. So that's just over 3 times that, and that's not even including removing the the net debt there. So less than less than two, probably about 2 years of free cash flow for their net debt if you do long-term short-term debt minus cash on hand it's about 2 years whereas deer and cnh are both greater than 10 years with cnh being greater than 20 years because their production of free cash flow is so bad so that's going to be a big concern of mine is that debt figure and again when you do the present value cal- calculation you don't necessarily take into consideration that debt and so here agco we see 4% being um, 4% revenue growth based on what I've seen over here. I think that that's reasonable. A margin of 5.5%, 5%, dampen a little bit from over here. I don't necessarily like that their free cash flow is lower on average, but you know, if we bring that down to 5, 4.5, no share change, 16 PE, because again, good, good return on Vista Capital. Is there they they do they just pay a dividend though buyback shares so maybe they don't deserve that premium so I'm going to dampen that a little bit um, but that dividend they've grown it in the past I think they're easily able to grow it from where it's at now given that you know it's 273 million it's about 50 60 percent I don't like them growing it more than I don't like the payout being greater than 50% because I like capital allocation available to do other things. But uh, to me, AGCO with these assumptions makes sense to me and it's 20% off. I just did Deer. I think Deer's got more of the moat status going on. They've been around since the 1800s, I guess so is CNH. But I mean, you hear John Deere and you know exactly what you're, what you're talking about. And I think a lot of people do. We're saying he's to fall 34%. I think that debt could make me a bit more concerned, um, but for now, fine with that. And for CNH, let's make some assumptions here. So I think that they will be able to grow pretty much in line with these other guys. I think their enterprise value is so much greater than their market cap that I wouldn't be willing to pay more than 10 there. Their earnings look fine, but their free cash flow is going to be the life of the business, and that's been really hit. And so... Sherry purchases. I don't know how they can repurchase shares if they, I mean, I do, they can just go into debt, but I don't want them to be doing that. So I'll say shares are relatively flat with, um, I guess they do pay a dividend, but I'm going to say it goes down to zero since again, they haven't produced, they haven't produced positive free cash for the last two years. And I don't want them to be giving out greater than hundred percent allocation of dividend. That doesn't make any sense to me. So for me, with all my assumptions, CNH, I'm definitely the most concerned about with that enterprise value being so much greater market cap with the amount of debt they have with their cash flow production. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Deer, I think, is a decent valuation. I think I'm still concerned with that debt figure. It is over 10 years, 10 times their um, average free cash flow production, but their free cash flow production has gone up quite a bit. And so I am feeling decent about Deer, but a company that I think is the best between the three of them from a return on invested capital standpoint, from the ability to turn, uh, to really hit that bottom line, uh, improve that the most, although their margins are the lowest on the operating margin in comparison to Deer and CNH, I think that the level of debt they have is manageable and the level of ability to turn top line into bottom line revenue is the most impressive for me and it's the best price compared to the three of them. So hopefully everyone enjoyed this video. A little, it was a little different, but three bi- three companies in the similar industry, um, and you know, it's not to say this is the best one. Go buy it. It's, do your own analysis. If you understand this type of business, see what you think. Let me know, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.